This video is sponsored by AthleticCases.com. Basketball, baseball, football, or soccer, no matter what the sport, you guys can now rock your favorite players on the back of your phone. Use the promo code Zach Lee for 10% off your order. Links are in the description box below. Yo, what is up, guys? It's me, Zach Lee. And first things first, man, huge shout out to Manu Ginobili, the guy of officially retired yesterday and is now a NBA legend just waiting to get into the Hall of Fame. And he has to be one of the most respectable players in NBA history. He was clearly great enough to be a starter on any team in the NBA. He probably could have went to any other team besides San Antonio Spurs and been like a legitimate superstar. But he decided that it was best for the San Antonio Spurs if he spent his entire career being the sixth man off the bench in order to win the four championships he went on to win. I mean, it's crazy that his entire career he was able to sacrifice by coming off the bench, but yet we have some players who are entering their 16th season in the league that still aren't willing to swallow their pride. So once again, congratulations to you, Mana Ginobili, even though I used to hate you, despise you back in 05 for beating my Pistons, but over the years, learned nothing but respect. And speaking of respect, over let's say the past week, a couple of videos have been released in the NBA community. And both of these videos were very similar, saying almost the same exact two things about two separate NBA players. There was a video uploaded by Mike Corzemba saying that Carmelo Anthony might be one of the most overrated players in the NBA history. And another video by Legend of Winning, AKA Low, saying that Steve Nash could very well be considered overrated too. And I watched both of those videos and didn't have a problem with either of those guys making those claims. They said what they think and they used facts or evidence to back up said claim. But that being said, in both of those videos, both Mike Corzemba and Legend of Winning said things that kind of got me thinking. And that basically was that both these players should not be considered overrated because they weren't great players because the reality of the situation is they were both extremely great and talented players, but they should be considered overrated because they were so great and were never even able to make the NBA finals or win an NBA championship. Whether that be because of career choices or other various circumstances. The reason for that is that when I see Carmelo Anthony, I see a guy who, yeah, killed it in life. NBA all-star, millionaire, owns about a thousand hoodies, basically is living the dream. However, I also see a player whose potential, in my opinion, has been pretty much wasted in terms of winning. I think Melo could have been a winner. I think he could have been playing in the NBA Finals, and I think the reason he never did is, yeah, due a little to some unfortunate circumstances, but mostly his own choices did him in. And the facts are just the facts. Steve Nash is indeed a two-time MVP winner. And for the people out there who support and defend Steve Nash about his MVPs, let's treat him like a two-time MVP winner then. And as a two-time MVP winner, we're gonna hold him to the same level of responsibility that we held every other two-time MVP winner. Matter of fact, we're gonna hold him to the same responsibility of players who haven't even won two MVPs. And that responsibility is to win a championship or at bare minimum, make the NBA Finals. Like I said, that got me thinking, especially after I heard Legend of Winning say it, because after I watched his video, I had to go back and rewatch the Mike Corazemba video just to make sure that I wasn't crazy and that they really were trying to emphasize the same point. And once again, that point is that Carmelo Anthony and Steve Nash are overrated, not because they weren't great players at one point in time, because they were, but because they were so great and never won an NBA championship or made it to the NBA Finals. Finals. And that's what I have a problem with right there. Because that thinking or that mindset indicates that if you are truly a great player in the NBA, then guess what? You have to be able to win an NBA championship or at least make it to the NBA Finals. And if you don't, then guess what? You just might be overrated. You might not be as great as we all thought that you once were. And Steve Nash, of course, had a little worse than Melo because he was a two-time MVP winner. So you add that onto his shoulders. And yeah, you definitely expect him to win an NBA championship because he was so great and won the MVP twice, right? And look, 
I hate to say this, but it's just a fact. It's that thinking right there, that mindset that Kevin Durant used to justify his move to go to the Golden State Warriors. The way that Kevin Durant's legacy was being written before he joined the Golden State Warriors was he was a phenomenal player, maybe the best scorer that the NBA has seen. He was an MVP, a legend in the making, right? That's, that's what it seemed like for Kevin Durant, but what if Kevin Durant didn't go to the Warriors and he was never able to win an NBA championship. How would we look back on the career of Kevin Durant in 5, 10, 15 years after he retired? How long would it take before some fans started to put his career under a microscope and dissect it and say, well, this guy was a former MVP, played alongside another MVP caliber player in Russell Westbrook and was never able to win a championship? Matter of fact, they had a 3-1 lead in the Western Conference Finals and blew it when both those guys were in their primes. So you're trying to tell me that this guy isn't overrated. He's supposed to be one of the greatest players the game has ever seen yet he couldn't even win an NBA championship playing alongside another MVP level player I don't know guys Kevin Durant might have been a little bit overrated during his time in the NBA how long do you think it would have been till that exact conversation happened had Kevin Durant not went to the Golden State Warrior you no know, what would have stopped us from doing to Durant what some are doing to players like Steve Nash now same exact thing could be said about a player like James Harden right now a fantastic player phenomenal talent one of the most talented shooting guards the league has ever seen of course he just won an MVP was on the best team in the Western Conference record wise last year and guess what came up short in the Western Conference Finals. He himself has never even been to the NBA Finals. Actually scratched that he went once back in 2012 when the Thunder lost to the Heat in five games, but I mean, yeah. And of course he's never won an NBA championship yet. And guess what? Who knows if James Harden will ever win an NBA championship or even make it to the finals again in his career. And if that happens, will he too get the Steve Nash treatment where this guy was an MVP, a very talented player in the league, but look at his career. What does he have to show for? Where are are his championships where are his finals appearances if he's so talented and was really an MVP caliber player he should have the hardware to back that up right Kevin Garnett was only one trade away from being in this exact same conversation. How would people look back on his legacy had he never been traded to the Boston Celtics? And outside of making it to the Western Conference Finals in 04, the same year that he won MVP, the rest of his playoff years, he never even made it out of the first round. He too would have to be considered overrated am i right just just based off the expectation that we have of great players especially mvp caliber players and the list could go on of former or past legends who didn't make it to the nba finals or never even won a championship all of them must be considered a little bit overrated because they were considered great, yet they never won a championship. That makes all of them overrated. Look, how many players can actually be overrated here? And I'm just saying once again that it's that mindset of a great player, especially an MVP level player, has to win a championship at some point in their career or else they're considered overrated. That's going to cause future players, future generations of players to do the exact same thing that Kevin Durant did out of fear of being put in that category. NBA championships, are a team award, right? Why do we measure the greatness of a single individual player based off a team award? Anyways, that is all I wanted to say on this topic. That's all I got for you guys today. Hope you understood the little message I was trying to get across there. And this was no hate towards Mike Corzembo or Legend of Winning. I love both those guys in the videos that they make. They make some of the most entertaining basketball videos on the internet. But I just feel like sometimes I watch some of the other creators in the NBA community and I want to get my voice out on that same topic because I might disagree with what they had to say and this was just one of those situations. But that is going to do it for today guys i gotta get back in the lab and thinking about how i want this show to be or how i want this channel to be come time for the nba season because i don't want to just do nba news i want to do nba news i love covering the news but at the same time i want to do a little more like include more into the episodes than just news so i'm not as dependent on news coming out every single day of course i'm gonna have the highlights back but i also want to have more discussions like this or the one i had yesterday in the video as well so i'm gonna have to do like 
three sections to each video where I do news, highlights, and then discuss a hot topic that is going on in the league too. I think that could be cool. You guys let me know what you think down in the comment section. I read like every comment of every video. So if you ever have a recommendation or a suggestion, the odds are if you comment it, I'm going to see it. And sometimes I do actually use some of the recommendations that I see down in the comment section below. Anyways, once again, thank you for watching the video. That's really gonna do it for today. So I guess until tomorrow or next time, I'm out of here. Peace.